Hey, welcome back to the second week of my trailer reno. If you've been following along last week, I finished cleaning off all the walls and the surfaces so that I could prep for paint this week. And I did even get one coat of primer onto the back end of the trailer and that's in the bath and the bunk area. Um, so the focus of this week is to have the main area primed and painted. I'm not too worried about the slide out portion yet. The slide out portion is gonna be its own total can of worms. So. Here you can see there's a couple of tight spaces around the oven and the vent hood that are going to need paint and I'm going to tape off around those joints of the appliances. Normally I don't really use a lot of tape when I'm painting in all my other painting projects. Personally I just prefer to cut in by hand because it requires a little less touching up at the end, a little less cleanup. Obviously do whatever techniques fit best for you, but let me just tell you that painting a camper or trailer, RV, whatever is not the same as my other painting projects. As you can see right now in this video, there's a rubber edging in the corner and that is literally all over the trailer. All the seams and joints have this rubber or I guess plastic T edging, which makes sense because these were like made to move. So all the interior compartments are bound to shift around and that edging just, you know, it provides a barrier, a flexible barrier for those joints. And I've seen in some other videos that people use like a stretchy caulk, a stretchy paintable caulk around these edges before painting them. I guess probably to keep the paint in place so that there's no pockets or bubbles. But I don't know, I guess it would make sense if you plan to stay in the trailer for like an extended period of time or if you plan to leave the trailer stationary parked in a park or something. But ours is really going to be for the weekends and I'm not too worried about that. So, <laughs> I mean the trailer was made to shift and and that's just what this trailer is going to do. I'm going to continue priming using the same Zinzer 123 primer. And for the smaller detailed areas of the trailer, I'm applying this with a slant edge brush. Since every surface and wall of this is going to get a coat of primer, I'm not really concerned with the overspray. Uh, the only portion that I am being a little bit more precise with is around the ceiling since the paint there is already finished. I don't want to mess with that. Also, um, not too worried about even coverage with this primer because I'm really only using it as another form of adhesion so like the paint will stick to the walls and let me just say this <laughs> prepping your trailer for paint is crucial there was only one spot underneath the bottom bunk where my paint just like refused to adhere right where the bottom bunk joins up with the top bunk and I don't know if it's because there was a glue in there or maybe I didn't like get into the corners deep enough but it was a real kick in the face when I went to go paint that. And yeah, even though it's my first trailer reno and this is probably the only spot that it happened to, I should be grateful. I'm not grateful, I'm sad. <laughs> now for the bigger areas, I just use a plain half inch or a three eighth inch nap roller to get it on the walls. And I'm also doing it here on the um, entertainment area. Now at this part of the reno, I'm actually feeling really confident still. Um, everything's going pretty well to plan and things are covering really well. And actually because of the central Florida heat, everything's drying really quickly. So as I'm finishing one, I can kind of move on to the next, just start from one end of the trailer to the other. And uh, so far, I mean, so good. So here's the trailer with one full coat of primer on all the surfaces. And I know you're probably thinking like, oh my God, it looks so good. Everything looks different, but let's be real. It looks like shit, <laughs> but that's okay because this is just step one and we can only go up from here. Now this is the money shot. Arr, oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm using Sherman Williams um, HGTV showcase paint and it's the paint and primer in one and it is so smooth and beautiful. The color is vanilla steam and it just goes on like butter. Oh my God, I love it. It's such a great neutral color. All right, so now in week two, I just got my first coat of the interior paint on, one of the colors actually, and it's looking pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about it, but I did have my first Today and I'll show you if you can see this is it I don't know if you can tell but that splinter in the wood she sure gave me a fright <laughs> yep I don't think she's made for my weight limit <laughs> so <laughs> another thing to add to the list 
So now this is two coats of that vanilla steam color and I probably could have gotten away with just one coat because it covers really well that paint and primer. But um, no, I always just do two coats just to make sure that I'm not missing any little marks. It'll really bother me if I don't. And I also chose to go with an interior satin paint. You could do a semi or a high gloss for better wipeability, but definitely don't go any lower because as soon as you scuff it, it's going to leave a mark. Now, I got really sick of painting the exact same cabinets over and over, so I'm switching it up and I'm going to do the refrigerator. I found this leftover chalkboard paint that I had in the, um, in the garage, and it's actually working out so well. I haven't actually written on the chalkboard yet, but it covered really nice. Now this is the drama color. I love it. I wanted to stick with neutrals in this space and I wanted it to be a dark one to kind of ground out the really light walls, but not necessarily black. And I found this color and it's called dark kettle black, which I guess is kind of like a merging of charcoal gray and black, but it's exactly what I was looking for. I just love it in this space. It looks so good. All right, this is the last day of work for this week that I'm going to include in the video. And so I'm really hoping that I'll be able to wrap up all the painting. I've got one more coat of the dark left and I have to finish this entertainment center. And then also, if you can see behind me, those white bits right there, the sides of the bed and the underneath of the bed. Um, I probably could have left it, but am I gonna do that? I'm gonna no, finish off won't do that. coats of polycrylic. <laughs> Um, clear coat over the high traffic areas like the kitchen cabinets and the bath cabinets because it adds an extra layer of protection um, especially since these are going to be used the most I just don't want our grubby hands messing it up and stuff like that so I apply it with a foam roller and sometimes a foam roller leaves these little bubbles so I'm just going over it with a sponge just to kind of give it a nice smooth finish and um, this is also a satin finish but I, it comes in a high gloss. Now would I use it if I was using a different finish in my paint? I think I would, just to have that added protection. And so this is the finished product after one coat of primer, two coats of interior paint, and then the two coats of polycrylic. And I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. So it's giving me um, good feedback going into the next week. And I'm not 100% what I'm going to do next. Maybe the counters, maybe the slide out, uh, maybe a combination of both. But let's do it together. <laughs>